Hey guys, this is Anita. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today's video is my review of Broken Earth Trilogy by N.K. Jemisin. This series is just incredible. I did not know much about this series going into it other than that this is something about the end of the world. It was right there in the series name Broken Earth. And I know that this is second person narration. I wasn't actually worried about that. I already read August by Edwin Tchaikovsky which was in second person POV. I did not take time to get used to that. Also, I read 100,000 Kingdoms by N.K. Jemisin a couple of years back. And I believe there are a couple of paragraphs in second person narration. Somehow I remember thinking about, oh, this is not so bad. So, Broken Earth will not be so bad. I don't know. I could be wrong. Anyway, this series is not entirely in second person narration. It also has third person narration and first person narration. And the change in narration actually did not bother me at all. It felt seamless. Surprisingly, my favorite is the second person narration. I give the credit to that both to the writing and audiobook narration. Jemison's writing is uh, straightforward. So I think it's well suited to the second person narration. And the audiobook narrator Robin Miles is just fantastic. She's good with all accents, all characters' accents but she is just incredible with the second person POV. I loved it. As I said, Jemison's writing is straightforward. She doesn't mince her words. Right from the prologue, she tells us what we are going to expect. Actually, fifth season starts with a mother finding her little boy's uh, dead body. His own father beats him to death and kidnaps his daughter. We see this mother heartbroken and ignoring the breaking of the world going on outside. In just prologue, that first paragraph, she tells us about the brutality of the world and that the fifth season has started. Fifth season is the season where the end of the world happens. In this world, because of high seismic activity, for every few years, some kind of uh, disaster happens. Either earthquakes or volcanic eruptions, they last few hundred years depending on the severity of the initial event. People are always on the survival mode. They have set of rules to follow. They save food stores for their community and they have dedicated people to guard their communities. Magic system is simple yet powerful. Some people have ability to move tectonic plates and control seismic activity. These people are called origins. During the fifth season, people need origins. Comms need origins to survive. They can quell earthquakes and calm volcanic eruptions but people in this world are so scared of origins they kill them they need them but they kill them there are small paragraphs at the end of each chapter through which jemison gave us little pockets of history about what kind of seasons happened in the past and how people killed origins after they saved them. The fear of unknown is so strong that people kill their own kids as we have seen in the prologue. Jemison did a fantastic job in giving us the social commentary on racism through the magic system and through the world. I think Broken Earth doesn't just mean the end of the world events. It's, it, it's also about the broken system of this humanity. We see that theme throughout the series. Actually, there are strong thematic elements in this series. I'll get to that after talking about world and characters. Jemison throws us into this world and she gives us the details of this world through her characters. In first book, fifth season, we mainly follow three characters. In prologue, we have seen the mother character. Her name is Esun. She is determined to find her daughter, so she ignores all safety instructions to follow in the middle of a season. She starts her journey and through her journey, we learn how important it is to follow the safety guidelines in the middle of a season and how important it is to stay in the comms walls. And we follow a little girl who is an origin. Her own parents call guardians to take her away because of her abilities. So who are these guardians? They can actually fight with origins. They run a origin school called Fulcrum. They train origins there and give tasks to professional origins to quell earthquakes and seismic activity at the end of the world. Basically, they control origins activities. If they cannot control, they kill them or worse. Yes, there is something worse than killing them. I don't want to say that. It's not a big spoiler, but 
I had this shocking visceral reaction when I read that. So I let you read it. And there is this another POV called Cyanide who is a trained origin. Through her character, we learn the internal politicking of this fulcrum, different capabilities of these origins. And we also learn the capability of uh, these obelisks who hang in the sky. We learn that origins can draw power from these obelisks and there is more to the magic than than what we know of. There are also fantastic secondary characters in this series. Some give us hope, some give us relief in this bleak world, some give purpose to our main characters. I loved following these secondary characters. What Jemison put these characters through is just brutal. They have to make some hard choices. A mother has to make hard choices for the survival of her kids, not just the survival just to give a meaningful life. I cannot even imagine the strength it needs to make those kind of choices. I have immense respect for Jemison for having the courage to execute some scenes. She knows what needs to be done and she did not stay away from that. For some people, book one fifth season peaked. They did not enjoy the second book obelisk gate and third book stone sky as much as the first one but for me every book is better than the previous one jemison continued to give us powerful themes while giving more details about the world and magic system actually the prologues of both book two and book three are equally powerful and straightforward she told us exactly what we are going to get in that book. In book 2, we get the new POV and she sets up the final book perfectly through this new POV. Actually, I saw Butler's influence in this book. I don't know if Butler is the exact inspiration for her, but because of reading Butler's books, I expected the final conflict. Also, Jemison gave us more details on these obelisks in book 2 obelisks and i think uh, secondary characters shined more in book two they almost carried the entire book and this series peaked with the third book stone sky for me right from the prologue itself it's one of the best prologues i have read there is a paragraph at the end of the prologue this is actually long i cannot read the entire paragraph i'll just read a couple of lines when a calm bill set up a fault line do you blame its walls when they inevitably crush the people inside no you blame whoever was stupid enough to think they could defy laws of nature forever well some worlds are built on a fault line of pain, held up by nightmares. Don't lament when those worlds fall, rage that they were built doomed in the first place. When I read these lines, I just knew this book is going to be a winner for me. Jemison carried this theme throughout this book, what it means to be oppressed and how people accept this kind of society and what it takes, what kind of courage it takes to go against the established system. She explores this theme throughout the series but because of some world building reveals it became more meaningful in the stone sky. Through a new POV she gives us the world building details in this book. We finally understand who are these guardians and how fifth season started finally gave us answers to the questions we had from the first book each reveal is interwoven with a different theme she talks about how these people exploited the earth itself where they should have seen a living being they saw only another thing to exploit where they should have asked or left alone they raped Again, it's not just about the earth magic or resources, it extends to the exploitation of people. She says through a character, for some crimes, there is no fitting justice, only repression. And I found myself agreeing with her. After the pain these characters have gone through, after the challenges they faced, I understand their desire to burn the world down. After layers of pain, the strength it takes to feel the need to save the world is immense and that conflict is the perfect showdown for this series. And that question of is the world worth saving and what it means to save the world was executed to 
for fiction. I enjoyed everything in this book, world building, plot, pacing, characters, magic system. But the thematic exploration we got in the last book elevated this entire series for me. That book took this series from good series to all time favorite series for me. While reading The Stone Sky, I actually wanted to start over and reread the entire series. Next time I want to binge read, I actually recommend for you all to read this series back to back. I took a couple of months break between each each book i think we get more when we read these books back to back if you already read this series please let me know your thoughts in comments and if you haven't read please 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 pick it up thank you for watching see you in the next video bye bye